Good evening, everyone. I'm James, and you are joining us once again in our time of prayer and fasting. And I hope that God has built your faith um, for the past couple of weeks. God has strengthened you as well, and God has, uh, you know, reminded you of so many truths about Him. Now, before we worship tonight, I want to uh, bring us to Psalm 95, verse 1 to 3. It says here, Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to Him with songs of praise. And why are we supposed to be doing that? Verse 3 tells us, Because our God, the Lord, is a great God. And He is a great King above all gods, above all authority, above all powers, above any fears. He is above all those things. He is God over all of those things. He is King and He can never be dethroned because He is the King forevermore. That's why I want to invite us to worship together. We might not be hearing one another, but I believe God hears our, our voices our prayers, and it's a harmony to Him. Why don't you join me in a word of prayer? Father, Lord, we're excited to come together as a community, giving you praise, giving you a joyful noise. And I know, God, that as we give this to you, as we praise you, God, I pray that that, that our hearts will be lifted to you. The anxieties, the panic, the fear, the, the uncertainty, Lord, it will be set aside and your hope would come and inhabit us. Your, your peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord, your, your heart of joy, the peace, Lord, all those things would come into our hearts so that we would be able to live a life that honors you. God, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's worship God together. Smooth. You make mountains 
In the name. 
to Jesus, the only name that saves. Oh, you may. In the midst of the battle, I put my trust in you. When darkness overwhelms me, I will look to you. When enemies surround me, and sorrow fills my heart. Your gentle voice reminds me, never be alone. So now I worship.
a recent call with Chinese leaders, including some leaders who minister in the city of Wuhan, which is ground zero of the coronavirus outbreak, we were doing a Bible study on how we face the facts without losing our faith from Romans 4. After talking about scripture and faith and, and discussing the application in their context, we had a little bit of Q&A. One question uh, a leader asked something like this, what are the keys to crisis leadership in light of the health and financial crisis that we're all facing? Uh, my spontaneous response was there are three key words that should guide spiritual leaders who are trying to successfully lead in crisis time. Those words are faith, hope, and love. I then reiterated that faith is not uh, against facts and contrary to facts, but that real faith faces the medical and scientific facts, but still believes and holds the promises of God. Next, I explained that hope is rooted in faith, and hope looks at the future, not the present. And finally, I explained that love is the demonstration of kindness and compassion toward people. It is especially important during trying times like this health and financial crisis we're experiencing. Among Christian leaders, there is much talk about faith and love, not so much about hope. It has been said that humans can live 40 days without food. I know some of us during prayer and fasting, we think we're going to die on day two, but about 40 days without food, four days without water, four minutes without air, but less than four seconds without hope. Today, I want to talk about hope. And I want to use scripture to answer four questions about hope. Question one, who is entitled to hope or who gets to have hope? Question two, what is God's role in hope or how is hope connected to God? Question three, how does a person get hope or how does hope happen? And finally, question four, what does hope do in my life? Our text is Romans 15. Now, Paul mentions hope 16 times in the book of Romans, five times in Romans 15, beginning in verse 12. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles in him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Verse 12 gives the shocking answer to the question, who gets to have hope? Isaiah, more than any other Jewish prophet, taught the ancient Jews to put their hope in the coming Messiah. In verse 12, Paul quotes Isaiah, In him will the Gentiles hope. In other words, those who seem far from God, the Gentiles, can even, even they can have hope. Religious outsiders can have hope. The people least deserving of hope can have hope. Why? Because of the root of Jesse, Paul quotes Isaiah as saying. The root of Jesse is a prophetic reference to the Messiah, to Jesus as a descendant of Jesse. The second question, how is hope connected to God or what is God's role in hope? In our text, verse 12 and 13, we see our triune God as the source and focus of hope. Verse 12, as I just said, speaks of Jesus as the root of Jesse, the son. Verse 13 mentions the God of hope. That's the Father. Then it teaches us that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can have hope. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all are the source and the focus of real hope. We don't abound in hope because we can muster up hope or because we can change our circumstances uh, or because we can predict or control the future. No but we can abound in hope because of the power and presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That is the source of real hope. To answer our third question, how does hope happen? Or how can a person get hope? We go back a few verses to the beginning of Romans 15 and verse four. It says, whatever was written in the former days was written for our instruction that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Endurance implies a tough journey. It means we don't quit, we don't turn back when the task gets difficult and when life seems unfair. 
we endure, we press on, we stay the course. Despite the personal pain and the feeling of injustice, as the Order of Man podcast intro says every week, quote, when life knocks you down, you get back up one more time every time. That's what endurance is. And it's through that endurance that we gain hope. Hope is the fruit of endurance and it's the fruit of the encouragement of scriptures, verse 4 says. In times of crisis, we tend to feed our minds with news and with commentaries on the news. Or sometimes we switch to uh, exaggerated versions of the news. That's not helpful at all. There are reliable fact-based sources of real news about the coronavirus and how to stay safe and healthy during this crisis. There are also reliable sources of financial news. We should educate ourselves, but we also must fill our minds with God's Word. Remember, the source of hope is endurance and the encouragement of Scripture. When we're filled to overflow with news and news commentary, but are running empty regarding God's Word, we'll develop this mindset of hopelessness and helplessness. But when we face the facts and then fill our minds and hearts with God's eternal truth, we will be people of great hope. Not because our circumstances are great, but because we know our God is great. And finally, the last question. What does hope do for us? For the answer to that important question, let's go to Hebrews 6.19. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain. The author of Hebrews calls hope an anchor to the soul. When I was a kid, I often fished with my grandfather. Our favorite lake was a relatively calm lake, but when we found the perfect fishing spot, we dropped the anchor to stabilize our little boat. The anchor made sure we didn't move from the right place. That's what hope does for us. When we get to the right place, to the place of God's will, we have hope to anchor our soul, to make sure the winds and waves don't push us off course. Now, when I was a teenager, my dad bought a ski boat. I remember one time we were in a large lake and a sudden thunderstorm hit. The waves were crashing into the boat, the winds were blowing. We tried to head back to the dock, but when we cranked the boat, we realized a ski rope was wrapped around our propeller. We could not move the boat. As the winds and waves pushed us closer to the rocky shore, we dropped our anchor, but we kept moving anyway toward danger. The anchor did nothing to stop the boat because it was unable to attach itself to anything underwater. Apparently there was nothing but mud on the bottom, no large rocks, no sunken logs, uh, just mud. This is the condition of much of the world. They drop their anchor, their hope, but it doesn't stop the fear, the panic, or the depression. The writer of Hebrews not only tells us that hope is the anchor of the soul, but that hope is attached to the promise of God and to God's ability to keep His promises. No matter how bad this health crisis gets and no matter how bad the financial crisis gets, if we teach people to put their hope in the promise-keeping God, then the health crisis and the financial crisis will not become a faith crisis. With the help of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, with the encouragement of scriptures, we will not only endure and survive, but we will thrive during this time. Let me close with a prayer from the Book of Common Prayer written for the third Sunday of Lent. Let's pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Steve, for the powerful word. Indeed, church, there is hope. In Christ, there is no hopeless situation. There is no hopeless case. 
Because the hope that we have is something na hindi siya positive thinking lang eh. The hope that we have has a name. And the name of that hope is Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Therefore, as we pray together, as we gather our family, may confidence po tayo to ask and pray, knowing that the hope that we have is alive because Jesus is alive. And because we know that we have that hope, meron po tayo excitement to really face the things, yung mga bagay na kakaharapin natin. And that's the first thing that we will pray tonight. It's about the courage to face the future. Let me read to you 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 20. It says here, Then David continued, Be strong and courageous and do the work. Don't be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord God, my God, is with you. I want to repeat that, is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. He will see to it that all the work related to the temple of the Lord is finished correctly. What a promise that we can have from God. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Let us together believe that. Let us declare that to our lives. We will give you two minutes to pray for this. And after that, I will wrap up in prayer. Let's pray. Father, thank you, God, that you got ahead of us, Panginoon. And that's our very hope na meron kami, God, to have the courage to face the future, knowing, Lord, that you are with us and your promise is true, that you will never leave us nor forsake us, God. Lord, doon palang panalo na kami, God. Sobrang, sobrang sarap nun, God, that, Lord, that in the process, Panginoon, that in the journey, Lord, we are, we are kasama namin yung King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. We don't deserve that. We don't deserve that. But because of what Jesus did on the cross, God, because of the finished work of Jesus Christ, God, we can claim the same promise, God, na sinabi ni David ay Solo. Father, thank you, God, the Lord. We don't have to be afraid of the things, Panginoon, na pwedeng maging dulot or cost, Panginoon, na yung pandemic or yung, yung, yung crisis ito. Because, Lord, our hope is not based, God, of the things, Lord, in this world, but our hope is based, God, on the very person of Jesus Christ. God, salamat po, Lord, that our hope 
Lord, na meron kami is not dead, but it is alive. Because our hope, the, our very hope is Jesus Christ. God, give us the courage to face or whatever the circumstances. Because Lord, you, as we know that you are with us, therefore, who can be against us? God, salamat Lord. We are excited to face the future. Salamat Lord. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to 36, it says here, And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. This time po, we are going to pray for compassion for the helpless and the lost. Alam naman po natin yung lahat ng nangyayari sa paligid natin, yung pangangailangan ng mga taong na, nasa bansa natin. And same thing with Jesus Christ. Ipanalangin natin na maramdaman din natin yung puso ni God sa buhay ng mga tao na to. Hindi lang yung sitwasyon nila physically, but even spiritually. So go ahead and let's start praying. Let's pray. Father, I pray na hipuin mo po yung puso namin upang maramdaman namin kung ano yung nararamdaman mo sa mga tao. Upang makita namin kung ano nakikita mo sa kanila. Upang sa pagkakataon na to at sa sitwasyon na to, magawa namin kung ano rin yung dapat namin gawin bilang mga anak mo. Alam ko na nandito kami, God, to become a light and salt to our nation. To those people around us. Kaya pinapanalangin ko na yung compassion na meron kami, it will lead us to boldly share the gospel to them. That we're able, Lord, to share the word of hope, the word of life, the word that will give them freedom, Lord. Tulungan mo kami na hindi lang namin nakikita ko anong nangyayari, but we are able to do the task that you've given us in this season, Lord. Help us, God. Help us, God, to have that compassion for the helpless and for the lost. Use us, God, as your hands and as your feet, as your mouth to these people. Here we are, Lord. Gamitin mo po kami for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name, Amen. And lastly, we will pray for creativity for the next season. And before that, allow me to read to you a scripture in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 12. 
a greeting from ESP. It says here, It is He who made the earth by His power, who established the world by His wisdom, and by His understanding stretched out the heavens. While we are staying at home and while all these things is happening around the world, indeed, the Word of God is reminding us to remain true to our call, remain true to the expectations of God from us, which is to continuously be a salt and a light, which is to use the wisdom from heaven, the wisdom from God that we have received, to use whatever platforms that is available for us today. I believe that with all the closed businesses and establishments nowadays, closed schools even, there are still open doors right there. There are still more opportunities and privileges to spread the word, for us to be established in faith, in word, in prayer, and even in our community, and even to speak the gospel, the good news that all the worlds out there needed to hear and needed to experience from themselves. And so, once again, as we pray, we will give you two minutes to pray for all the items, and then we will close this in prayer. Join me in a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you that you are faithful and true to all your promises. Thank you, O oh God, that we can receive wisdom from you and that the wisdom that we receive is not just from men, but wisdom from heavens. Knowing full well, Lord God, that you are using all the technology and all the platforms available today for us to greater share or greater have opportunities to spread the word and spread the good news that the people out there desperately need to hear and for them to experience how loving how caring and how you are in full control of what's happening in our daily lives so lord may we be faithful may we be good stewards Lord God, of these tools, of this technology that you have given us in our present times, in this present age. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that we will be able to use all the technologies available, Lord God, to speak life, to speak hope, to speak joy, and that there's, Lord God, that there's always light at the end of the tunnel, Lord God. Lord, through the technology that you have provided for us. Yes, oh God, these are also part of your provisions, Lord God. For us to be to remain true in our call to be missional, for us to continuously be a salt and a light to our families, Lord God, to whoever 
we are staying with at home, Lord God. Or for some of us, Lord God, who are working in the offices or who have been staying there. And even for those who are in the front lines, Lord God. Lord, for all of us as your sons and your daughters, Lord God. For all of us who are your followers and your believers. May we be, Lord God, the, the salt and the light. May we be your hands and may we be your feet, Lord God, in these trying times, Lord God. In these times of difficulty and in this time of challenges. Lord, we are grateful. Holy Spirit, thank you for continuously empowering us, Lord God, to, to be a vessel, Lord God, of hope and life to people out there. So God, thank you once again, Lord God, that you are going to unite all the Filipinos, Lord God, to unite us in love, in love for our God and in love for our country. Thank you, O oh God, that you are not yet done with us and that there's still hope in the coming days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us in our last day of our prayer and fasting. We are so encouraged that we were able to pray and worship together. We hope na hindi po ito yung last day natin to seek God, but rather every day we will pray, we will worship, and we will seek God with all of our hearts and with all of our minds. And uh, kung meron po tayo mga answered prayers, uh, testimonies about our breakthroughs, we want to hear from you. Share it with us because we want to celebrate it with you. Kung hindi pa po tayo na answer ni Lord, I would like you to be reminded that God is faithful. Sinabi niya sa promise niya that no matter how many promises God has made, their yes and amen are, be, are being spoken by us. We can always say amen to every promise that God has given us. Why? Because He is faithful and He is willing and able to fulfill every promise that God has given us. Thank you so much again for joining us in our prayer and fasting. God bless you all. Thank you so much po sa inyo.